Okay, smarty pants, answer this one. Do you know what earthquake magnitudes actually feel like? Well, at magnitude 1, you wouldn't notice a thing. At 3, you might slosh your coffee if you're drinking. At 5, things can start to shake off shelves, and it definitely gets your heart racing. But at 7.5, that's when the ground itself rips, buildings sway, and whole streets can split. And now, scientists warn a fault we thought wasn't active anymore could unleash something that strong under a small sleepy town in Canada. Now, if you trace your finger across a map of northwestern Canada, you'll find Dawson City in the Yukon. It looks like a nice place to escape from civilization. After all, it only has about 1,600 residents. It's quiet, remote, and famous for its gold rush past. In the late 1890s, Dawson City ballooned into a boomtown almost overnight as prospectors chase gold. Today, the rush is long gone, but the town still looks the part. Wooden boardwalks and saloon-style facades give it the feel of a set straight out of a Western movie. Oh, and beneath all of that is a fracture in the earth itself. Dawson City is located on top of what's known as the Tintina Fault. It's a massive crack in the Earth's crust that stretches for hundreds of miles toward Alaska. Until recently, scientists believed that this zone had been inactive for over 40 million years. But newer studies tell a different story. Just a quick reminder, faults are giant cracks when two slabs of Earth's crust meet. They're always trying to slide past each other, but their jagged edges catch and lie. Pressure builds for decades, continuously bending and straining the rock. Then, suddenly, the locked zone breaks, and the slabs slip into a new position in just seconds. That abrupt lurch releases all the stored energy, sending seismic waves racing outward. The ground-shaking consequence is called an earthquake. Scientists say the ground on each side of Tatina has been trying to slide past itself for ages, but it's stuck. And now, that stuck zone has built up around 20 feet of strain. That's how far the land would shift sideways if it all gave at once. That's not just a small crack. That's straight up something from a disaster movie. If all that built-up tension snaps in one go, the result could be a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. How strong is that? Well, pretty strong. So what happens during a big quake? The shaking can last up to 30 seconds or more, which is an eternity when the walls are swaying and the floor feels like it's rolling under your feet. If you're near the fall, things can get really scary. The ground doesn't just shake, it could take a big step sideways. This can lead to some mm, renovations. Roads might get a new zigzag pattern, and unreinforced buildings could decide to do the twist. And if it happens in a Canadian winter, let's just say it could turn a simple power outage into a survival horror adventure. Being on soft soil is like sitting on wobbly jelly. It amplifies the shaking. Solid rock is a bit more stable, however, it's still dangerous. For example, in Mexico in 2003, a 7.5 quake damaged over 43,000 homes, buckled roads, and cut power for miles. In Sulawesi in 2018, the same magnitude not only leveled buildings, but triggered a tsunami and liquefaction. The whole neighborhood was swallowed as the ground turned to quicksand. Now here's something interesting. Most people don't think of Canada as an earthquake country, but it actually gets around 5,000 quakes a year. However, they're so small that you'd never feel them. The real hot spot is the West Coast, near British Columbia. That's where you hear people whisper about the infamous big one. It refers to a future megathrust earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone, a massive fault that runs for 600 miles just offshore. Unlike Tintina's sideways slip, Cascadia works by one tectonic plate shoving under another. For centuries, the North American plate has been bent upward like a spring as the Juan de Fuca plate has been diving below. When it finally snaps, that's a magnitude 9.0, more than 30 times stronger than a 7.5. We know it can happen because it already has. The last big one struck in 1700. It was so powerful, it didn't just shake the Pacific Northwest. It launched a tsunami across the ocean that smacked Japan, 
where villagers recorded an orphan wave with no local quake to explain it. Only later did scientists connect the dots. Now this brings us to the fact that despite all this, the size of the fault, the quiet buildup of strain, and the potential for a magnitude 7.5 earthquake, the Tatina Fault isn't even listed on Canada's official seismic hazard map, at least for now. That means no warnings, no color-coded danger zones. And when a fault isn't on the map, nobody designs a building for it. There's no proper preparation. You don't build reinforced structures or have seismic codes, especially when people don't expect that the ground could split open. Now, to be honest, that's not someone's mistake. The fault just didn't show any signs of being active recently. And this part of Canada is really big, quiet, and doesn't have a lot of monitoring. Not until too long ago, people had thought of the Tatina as just a geological oddity, something cool for looking at the past, but not really relevant for the future. For years, the Tatina fault flew under the radar. But that changed when researchers brought high-tech gear. They uncovered subtle but clear land shifts near Dawson City. They looked like scars on the landscape and pointed to past earthquakes, including one that pushed the land nearly 3,000 feet over millions of years. Now, interestingly, newer glacial features showed no signs of disruption, which means the last major quake probably happened right before the end of the last ice age. In geologic terms, that's pretty recent. When scientists lined up those land shifts with the ages of glaciers, the picture was clear. The Tatina Fault isn't retired, it's just been on a really long coffee break. And now, it's itching to clock back in. That's why researchers want it officially on Canada's seismic hazard map. Dawson City deserves more than a shrug emoji when the ground decides to stretch. The experts are basically playing detective with dirt. They're scanning forests and rivers for faint scars that past earthquakes tried to hide. They're digging trenches like archaeologists with a taste for chaos, flipping through the Earth's diary one muddy page at a time. Every crack, wrinkle, and layer adds to the story of when Tatina last threw a tantrum and how loud the next one could be. It's pretty cool that satellites can literally track if one side of a valley is slowly creeping ahead of the other, like tectonic snail racing. The goal is to find out how often this fault snapped in the past, how much stress it's still holding on to today, and whether it's going to go off quietly or all at once. Finally, just because you know that plates are pushing against each other underneath, you still can't put a date on it. Long stretches of silence might mean the rocks are getting ready for something huge, or they could just be releasing stress in tiny ways that go unnoticed. Scientists can model possibilities, but no one has a countdown clock for the next rupture. The smartest mindset isn't prediction, it's preparation. You brace for the plausible, not the precise, because the Earth's schedule doesn't come with reminders. It turns out the Earth's crust is always fidgeting. It's just that our maps are a little behind on the gossip. A fault everyone thought was harmless might actually be sitting on a magnitude 7.5 size secret. But don't worry, this isn't a cue to panic. It's a cue to get smart. Better data, sturdier buildings, and a few just-in-case habits. When the ground finally decides to settle its debt, what really matters isn't whether Dawson City feels the shake. It's whether everyone's prepared enough to turn a potential disaster into just a real wild story to tell later. Hey, have you ever been in an earthquake? I have. Tell me your story in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.